Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. Welcome back to the bench, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're gonna be breaking down the work of Jiao. I don't know how to say this guy's name. Let me know in the comments down below how to pronounce this man's name. Hold up. But you know what? I'm gonna check. Apparently it's pronounced Jiao. And you know what? I'm really glad in order to have this graffiti artist on this series because their work is phenomenal. As always, these videos are meant for you guys. So if you have a favorite graffiti artist whose work you'd really like me to break down, leave their name in the comments down below along with a link to their Instagram or something. That way I can do that for you. This is somebody who has a semi-unorthodox style and the reason I say that is because typically in graffiti, you prioritize the letter structure and then 3D and other things such as that fall lower on the priority list. While they still do prioritize letter structure, their 3D is oftentimes massive. And I'm talking about disproportionately massive massive to the letters. When done incorrectly, this could end up making the 3D the focal point and it can make the letters way too little and almost make it as if the 3D was meant to be focused on. And that's when it's done incorrectly. He's a perfect example of somebody who does this flawlessly and still manages to take the piece and put it on top. Typically you'll see graffiti artists balance their letter with their 3D by having the letter thicker or more abundant amount of letter structure as opposed to more abundant amount of 3D. That doesn't happen here. Instead, he has a ton of 3D, which adds a ton of weight, but he has all the interesting stuff put into the letters. While his 3D doesn't lack any detail, his fill-ins have a higher variation of colors, and as a result, they tend to have more values as well. And because of this, it also stands to reason that they're gonna have a more variety of saturations as well. These three things, the color, value, and saturation, are what allows his letter structures to pop back out, despite, in some pieces, not being as abundant as the 3D. One thing I also really love about his style is his use of extensions. You see, his letters are very simplistic. His letters are not anything crazy, and I think this is something that a lot of newer graffiti artists struggle with. You see, newer graffiti artists, they see work like his, and they don't yet fully understand or grasp what's happening. And as a result, sometimes they can't even really point out the letters. This causes the newer graffiti artists in order to see letters of distortions where they don't necessarily exist. And as a result, when they go back to their own work in order to try things out, they end up over-stylizing the letter, not realizing how simple the letter actually was in the overall piece. And you'll see that in a lot of wild styles, like even Saber's pieces have really simplistic letters. But it's more so the use of the other fundamentals that helps in order to go ahead and facilitate that style that we all enjoy. And that's exactly what's happening here. His use of extensions is phenomenal. And his use of extension also goes really well with his use of 3D. As we previously mentioned, he loves really bold, thick 3D. So the fact that his extensions are overreaching and overarching and extend really large distances allows not only his extension to cover a lot of negative space, which helps balance the piece in many cases, but it also allows his 3D to take advantage of that negative space and add more depth. This also gets something else though. Because his 3D covers such a large amount of space, he covers a lot of negative space as well, which allows him to expand experiment and do really dope things with a negative space within an individual letter as well as between letters. And this is because his 3D covers such a massive amount of ground, he doesn't have to worry about negative space taking away from his image. On that note, negative space is really important to have. I want to stress that. This is something a lot of newer graffiti artists also struggle with. A lot of newer graffiti artists try to completely eliminate negative space from their pieces. And you gotta understand, negative space is how we end up with letter structure. You do not have accurate letter structure if you get rid of all of the negative space for pieces. So notice how his letters themselves, if you take out the 3D, they do have a lot of negative space. His letters have a ton of negative space. He allows for the negative space between the letters to actually breathe. He lets his letters have room to extend. And then he fills that negative space back up with the 3D. It's a smart move on his part. As far as letter rename, weight, and flow, those are two things that we haven't really talked about too, too much with this guy. As far as letter name weight is concerned, he's once again using his extensions in order to go ahead and help the letter name weight out. If something weighs a little bit too much on one side, he'll throw more extensions on the other side. This is honestly an optimal and a textbook use of extensions. Extensions are great for this. This is kind of one of the big points of extensions. A 
other than that, extensions are also really used to flow, and that's going to be how he flows a lot of his pieces. While he may not be using something like momentum flow, which is something that Mad C uses a ton of, instead he prefers to use line and letter uniformity and similarity. In some pieces, he has a lot of line uniformity. In other pieces, not so much. But regardless, he always has a lot of letter uniformity and similarity. And that's more than enough in order to carry a piece through flow. You don't need to have every single aspect in your piece. The whole point of flow is just to give your piece a sense of cohesiveness, a sense of togetherness, so like that your individual letters can feel like a word. And that's really it. Guys, this is an amazing graffiti artist. However, I don't know how to say his name. How do you say it again? I, forget. I need to go back to Google. So huge thanks for you guys recommending I check out his work. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. I'll leave a link to his Instagram in the description down below. If you guys like me to break down your favorite graffiti artists, leave them in the comments down below along with the link to their Instagram. If you guys enjoyed today's video, let me know with the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you learn from looking at his piece? And if you have any questions, leave those down there as well. Check it out. If you're new here, my videos are all for you guys, man. This is an extremely community-driven channel, and pretty much every single video I come out with is for you guys. And at your guys' request. So feel free to join the smartest graffiti community anywhere online. And subscribe. This is the best place to learn graffiti, with the most credible information you can find literally anywhere. Also, if you want some more graffiti content, I got some videos on your screen now. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.